IPv4 addresses are somehow rare and your ISP will usually provide one to a whole range of its customers at once. If you want to run a server that is located in your very own room, you will usually need to have an expensive business plan that grants your router a dedicated IP for itself alone. In a recent blog post of mine, I have shown an alternative approach that also allows you to have a public IP at home. It requires you to set up a special kind of VPN server and to have some basic Linux machine at hand, a Raspberry Pi for example. When a computer is being plugged into the Pi's Ethernet port, the Pi would set up a VPN tunnel between the computer and the Reddit server. The computer at the other end of the cable will essentially think and behave like it's sitting somewhere in a data center, having its own public IP and entirety of ports publicly exposed by default. And there are actually no limitations regarding the age of the system you want to expose. Even my 486 running on Windows 95 was somehow able to get along with the setup, or so I thought. After I spent some time goofing around with an FTP server and asking my friends to upload their PayPays and Giga chats onto the 486's hard drive, I decided to swap the Pi with a laptop. While analyzing the in and outgoing traffic with Wireshark, I realized that this dinosaur of an operating system has started to randomly send pings across the internet. Who knows, maybe it has tried to contact some long forgotten services belonging to Microsoft, but I didn't really want this machine to become an attraction for that infamous hacker who's being referred to as Fortune. I'll be preparing another obsolete machine for him instead. Time for the intro. My machine of choice for this experiment was an HP Vectra that was manufactured somewhere around the late 90s. I found this computer near dumpster back in 2017 and my instincts just made me keep it ever since. As my personal objective was getting the machine hijacked as quickly as possible, I decided to install Windows 2000 on it. Technically speaking, it's quite similar to Windows XP, but requiring less resources than its exploit-ridden successor. After the installation was done, I kept everything in its native state. The only change I made to the system was placing a plain text file on the desktop. Having spent an entire night preparing the setup, I could finally subject the machine to its fate and let other people know of its existence. But even before I was able to send my post, it became apparent that something wasn't right. While trying to come up with a good headline, the computer has rebooted out of thin air, so to speak. Lord. So I hurried up a bit creating my post and have been bombarded with awards for days to come. I'd really like to thank you for that fellow redditors from r slash hacking. Thank you a lot. <laughs> a few minutes after that post was online, the machine has gone through a second reboot. My next two hours were essentially spent scrolling through reddit and watching that system perform a shit ton of those reboots. Surprisingly, the system then managed to survive an uptime of an entire hour. No reboots, no odd behavior, nothing. At one point, it even managed to launch its default screensaver and mess around with the camera focus by doing so. In order to keep myself awake, I then decided to play some video games. While doing so, you might have guessed it, the machine went through another reboot. Being quite unimpressed at this point, I simply left it to do its thing. But then all of a sudden, I saw something blue pop up in the reflection of my glasses. Assuming that I'd get to see just another HP post screen, I turned my head towards the monitor just to find out that the computer is blue screened. I'm not sure if it's just me, but those old Windows 90 and 9X era blue screens are absolutely frightening to look at. After manually restarting the machine, I decided to look for anything unusual on my hard drive. And it didn't take much time for me to find something weird. 
there was this file called install2.exe on the root of my drive. Despite all of its attempts to hide in plain sight, the file name sounded way too generic for it not to be sus. After transferring this file onto a flash drive and doing a quick virus scan, my worst assumptions have been confirmed. Someone or something or some they them has tried to turn my computer into a crypto mining rig. Just keep in mind, we are talking about a late 90s Pentium here with its whopping 400 MHz of clock speed on a single core. Considering the stupidity of this attack, it's safe to assume that the infection originated from a bot rather than a real human. But I've seen enough at this point. It was time for me to pull the plug and do some further research. A sophisticated virus scan revealed that this poor 5GB hard drive has become a host for quite a lot of nasty stuff. <coughs> After I managed to put the collected data in chronological order, I was able to figure out what the machine's odd behavior was all about. See, all of these dubious EXE files were using the same vehicle when making their way into my machine. It's called Eternal Blue. When setting up a Windows computer, there's a set of networking protocols going to be installed by default. And since the release of Windows 2000, one of these protocols used to be SMB, version 1 to be exact. It's essentially the stuff that allows you to do file and printer sharing. A few years ago, the US government managed to find a flaw that would allow an attacker, the US government for example, to execute code on a remote machine if it happens to use SMB version 1. Instead of letting Microsoft resolve the issue, they decided to keep this discovery for themselves. But just like a certain kind of disease, it got leaked from the place it was originally engineered at. From there, the exploit got into the hands of malicious coders, allowing stuff like WannaCry and Petya to become a thing. The situation got so bad that Microsoft even decided to release their patch for Windows XP. The OS they officially announced that many years ago. Just keep in mind that all of this took place back in 2017. But even today there are quite a lot of Windows machines around that didn't get to receive that patch yet. Even some unupdated Windows 10 machines might be affected, still leaving behind a niche market for malware creators. And when performing this exploit, there's a slight risk of crashing the target machine, causing it to reboot or display a blue screen. That's where Eternal Blue even got its name from. Sounds quite familiar to me. So, is there something I learned from all of this? Don't expose old crap to the internet, I guess. And just to let you know, there's nothing preventing you from going online with unsupported operating systems. Despite the numerous security gaps older Windows is unknown to have, it's not very likely that the old Windows machine you might happen to keep on your network will be affected by any of those. Just make sure that it's trapped in a private address space, which will always be a case when using a regular home router. In this video, I've essentially tried to present a worst case scenario to you. And it took me quite some time and effort to even get there. And if you want to support me on my journey of doing obsolete computer stuff, feel free to leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. I have some hard drives that need some formatting. <laughs>